Welcome to Wednesday evening Sunset News. In this half hour, we bring you the latest news stories from the community, economic indicators, tomorrow's weather and sport. I am Ashwin Berry. In the news tonight, an earthquake occurred on Tuesday at 10.36 p.m., 24 kilometers northeast of Korihas, which had a magnitude of 5.2. The Ministry of Mines and Energy's Geological Survey confirmed today. In a media release by the Geological Survey's Deputy Executive Director, Gloria Simobali, it is said that the Namibian Seismology Network also recorded four aftershocks with a magnitude of between 2.2 and 3.7. The Ministry confirmed that it was sending out a team of of geoscientists to conduct an intensity survey on the quake. Politicians have been fingered by the government institution's pension fund as culprits when it comes to squandering their pension money, subsequently subjecting them to rely on money from family and friends to get by. The trend of workers blowing their pensions before hitting retirement age is one of the many factors that gave birth to the controversial Financial Institutions Management Act that has pitted the financial regulator NAMFISA against the public. GIPF CEO David Nuyoma says the at which pension payouts were being depleted even affected public office bearers who formerly served in parliament. I've seen honorable members, former honorable members walking, taking taxis. I've seen them even two weeks ago. I saw one approaching our building because that honorable member no longer has the benefit of a pension or a steady income, hence the issue of preservation. He said yesterday when GIPF appeared before the Parliamentary Committee on Economics and Public Administration. A feasibility study into the extension of Zambia's rail network into Namibia has found that the project is financially and environmentally viable and should go ahead. Commissioned by Namibia's Transport Ministry and carried out by MR Technofin consultants, the study was funded by the Namibian government and the African Development Bank. The study involved the construction of the 772-kilometer Trans-Zambezi Railway extension from Khruetfontein to Katima Mulilo via Rundu in Namibia and is part of a multinational railway line between Namibia and Zambia via the Zambezi region. It will also facilitate connectivity with Angola, Botswana and the Southern Democratic Republic of Congo. As child trafficking cases are on the rise, the Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration issued a press release for travelers. Various measures were recommended, which people traveling with children in particular should urgently take into account. For example, parents should always have a copy of the birth certificate when traveling with children under 18. All public health measures in the fight against COVID-19 remain unchanged and are extended for a period of 30 days until 15 May 2022. This was announced by President Hage Gengob during the 42nd COVID-19 briefing on the national response measures. The president also called on Namibians to get vaccinated. This will not only limit severe illness and hospitalizations, but will also instill confidence in the economy, specifically the tourism and hospitality sectors, which have been negatively affected by COVID-19. There remains a lot of work ahead before we can safely say that COVID-19 is behind us, he said. Worldwide food prices hit a record high in March as exports from Russia and Ukraine, the world's largest grain producers, are largely stuck in those countries. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization said that its food price index jumped nearly 13% from February to March with wheat, barley, corn, oats and sunflower oil in short supply because of the six-week-old war in Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine account for 30% and 20% of global wheat and corn supplies respectively. The FAO warned on Friday food prices could rise as much as 20%, which in turn could cause malnutrition in countries across the Middle East, Africa, Asia and elsewhere. That brings us to the end of our top stories. In Community News tonight, we focus on thrifting in this economy. Stay with us.
Now in Community Talk, Yolanda now talks to thrift store owner Rochelle Mulder about why second-hand buys are economical and more sustainable. Have a look. I think in six weeks of time, there's something you didn't think about at the beginning of the year that will happen, not let alone the reality. How do you think is the two-door winkel so important? Man, om te sê, ek het rechtig nie gedink, dat was een markt al voor of enigszins sal dit een sukses kan wees nie. Want ek doen properties en nou sit ek met een winkel, so ek sal nooit gedink het die jaar dus wat gaan gebeur nie. Maar ek het achterkom, dat was een baie groot behoefte, mense kan nie meer dier kleren bekostig. Vooral mense wat meer as een kind het, of wat hulle werk verloor het gedurende die koude tijd of iets. En allemaal het my ongelukkig kleren en goedies nodig, dit is iets wat ons moet nodig het. So dit is nou bekostig geworden vir mense om te kan bekostig. Mense wat meer as een kind het, kan nou vir elke kind daar maar iets hier koop vir die winter of vir wat hy nodig het. So ons probeer met alle behoeftes en dan ook waar ons aankoop, help ons ook mense wat wel sik of wat een geldkie nodig het vir hom vir een brood of iets hier te moet betaal. So baie mense wat ek baie aankoop is mense wat dringend geld nodig ook het. So so help ek in daar opzicht ook wat dit aan betreft. So ons probeer maar die gemeenskap ook wel vir ons kan. As een mens gaan kyk na die volhoudbaarheid, die meeste van die kleren is nog in baie goeie toestand en as daar nie winkels is soos jou nie nie, dan gaan leid dit op een ashoop waar dit ek vir die tweede leven kon kry. Hoekom is volhoudbaarheid van kleren so belangrijk? Dit is maar baie mense kyk maar mooi na hulle goeikies en baie mense groei uit hulle kleren uit. So obviously is dit maar die goeikies met kleren nog rarig niks nie. En ons het ek het wel navorsing het gelees dat kleren is die grootste pollution in die wereld. As jy gaan kyk oor see, so dit is waar die die stresswinkels begin bestaan het oor see, is juist om te help met die pollution, dat dit kan verminder, want dit is ietsie wat nie disintregeer, sommer makkelijk nie. So, dit is een goeie ding, so ons kyk daarom na die groen gedeelte, en ja, ek is maar baie, ek kyk maar mooi na die goeie kies, wat die goeie kies ons wel aankoop, het jy hap nou nie, ons koop van goeie kies en goeders in nie, maar allemaal wat ons wel aankoop, so goeders nog een baie goeie kwaliteit, dit is amper nog net so nie soos in die winkel, so jy sal die sommer ietsie vind wat rechtig stikkend is, en is daar is, is dit jylle in aparte hoopie vir aparte prijsie vir die wat dit wel kan bekostig. Now, there's nothing quite as unique as owning some previously loved clothing. In our story of the day, Sinoret commissioned a 33 kilovolt power line from Marulabum through Nkata village to Mangeti Jun. More on this development after the break. Diving straight into our story of the day, Sinoret commissioned a 33 kilovolt power line from Marulaboom through Mkata village to Mangeti June on Tuesday. The project was fully funded by the Ministry of Mines and Energy to the tune of 40 million Namibian dollars and sees the successful electrification of 183 households, 150 in Mangeti June, 30 at Roydach Hek, and three teachers' houses at Mkata. Enzo Amwele was there. Honorable Governor, I would like to thank you for taking us through an overview of the electrification program in the whole of our children to parents. So that it becomes a well-known fact that we are not only in Mangeti, we are not only in the Tumba constituency, we are in the whole of Ochozonjupa and the whole country of Namibia. We are gathered here today at Mangeti June Settlement to celebrate the service delivery, marking the successful completion and to commission the Omangeti June electrification project. Indeed, this project fits in the aspiration of our vision 2030, that Namibia's economy is open, competitive, and diversified, providing the basis to avail resources for the fulfillment of major national objectives like poverty reduction and the provision of adequate social services and infrastructure facilities 
such as transport and communication network, electricity, housing, and water. Goal number seven of the Sustainable Development Goal calls to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and energy for all. This project will lead to new economics and jobs, empowerment of women, children, and youth, better education and health, equitable and inclusive communities, and greater protection from and resilience to climate change. This afternoon, at this uh, very auspicious uh, occasion, which mark a very important milestone in the life, life of the community of Mangeti Dune and the Chumque constituency in general. Chumque constituency has been lagging behind in my, in many aspect development for a quick sometimes due to its uh, remoteness and uh, vast area. Is key. Electricity is not a luxury, but an enabler. It is an enabler and brings about the necessary developments into an area. Today we are witnessing the electrification of a 33 kilo watt voltage line that stretches for 120 kilometers, Honorable Deputy Minister. One of the key things as we were busy with this line was that we should make sure that the whole Chunko West is covered and every inch of it is electrified. Our lighting up of Mangeti officially today, keeping to the commitment of the Ministry of Mines and Energy and the Government of the Republic of Rural Electrification. <coughs> Congratulations once again. So now it's light up. The street lights are on. Beautiful sights and indeed essential development. Now after the break in economic news, we will delve into the impending high interest rates and prices in Namibia. See you soon. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. This is your economic news story. The increase in food and fuel prices coupled with rising interest rates are expected to put a further burden on consumers' budgets, especially the low-income segment of society. The Bank of Namibia decided to increase the repo rate by 25 basis points from 4% to 4.25%. This means the prime lending rates for local commercial banks will also increase from 7.75% to 8%. Have a look at this clip. We are seeing high record fuel and commodity prices. Inflation is becoming a serious issue. Pressures are building up locally. Globally, it's actually a big issue. And I'm going to give you more detail about that. Inflation is rising and it's really increasing the cost of living throughout the world, including Namibia. Prices are rising faster than wages, decimating the purchasing power and the spending power of consumers, not in Namibia, but throughout the world. Globally, what we are seeing is there is a deterioration of risk and a re-evaluation of policy choices that's playing out. That was your economic news story. Let's get into the economic indicators. The Namibian dollar is unchanged next to the Chinese yuan and up against other major currencies. On the NSX, most stocks held their ground with MTC stock at 7.52 points and Namibia breweries at 40.01. Parata stock closed down 0.10%, while the local and overall indices both dipped 0.84% and 1% respectively. Looking at commodities, gold, copper and zinc are all down, with Brent crude oil making a 5.9% surge. 
After the break, we take a look at the floods in Durban, South Africa, which have continued to take lives as well as the weather predictions. Stay with us. Now in this evening's weather story, the death toll in South Africa continues to rise as the country is being hit by torrential rains and damaging flooding. According to local authorities, at least 60 people have now perished in the KwaZulu-Natal province in the southeast. More heavy rainfall was predicted on Tuesday night, adding possible additional chaos and residents were asked to avoid travel. Torrents have already cut off many roads, collapsed houses and bridges, submerged cars and stockpiles of containers have been seen floating, including in the province's largest city, Durban. South Africa's army has been deployed to participate in rescue operations as residents, including school children, were trapped for several hours because of the rising waters. The local NGO, Gift of the Givers, said it saw highways turned into rivers and people trapped under collapsed walls. Let's get into your weather predictions. Katima and Rundu can expect thunderstorms with maximum temperatures of 33 degrees and 31 degrees respectively. Hentys Bay and Swakopmund will be partly cloudy with minimum temperatures of 14 degrees, while Kitman's Warp can expect a minimum of 10 degrees with a 32 degree maximum. In the international news slot, we zone in on Senegal's interfaith harmony. Stay with us. Choose your Flex package with Paratus today. Sign up for ultra-fast fiber with the convenience of mobile LTE. That's two products in one bundle. It's new, it's one bill, and you can stay connected in more than one location. For more information, visit paratus.africa forward slash na. Senegal is a Muslim-majority country. One year ago, two Christian associations launched a food distribution initiative for Muslims finding themselves away from home for Ifa and unable to break their Ramadan fast on time. In a Dakar courtyard turned into a kitchen, young volunteers are busy. They are preparing food they will share for Iftar, the evening meal eaten by Muslims during the month of Ramadan. Two Christian groups are in charge of the meal distribution. Marie Cardinal heads the La Main du Coeur Association and she is happy to serve for the second year in a row. A joy even bigger given is the fact that Ramadan and Lent, the Christian fasting season, coincide. Gifting our Muslim and Christian brothers with a meal is more than a gesture. It also conveys a message. It is true that we have different beliefs, but it is necessary that we respect each other's faith. The initiative brings together Christians and Muslims. At dusk, volunteers from National Laity Council and Le Men Sur Le Coeur Association hit the road to meet motorists. During the month of of Ramadan, many Muslims often find themselves unable to break their fast on time. Thanks to food distribution, the fasters, be them passerby or motorists, are treated to dates, coffee, water and sandwiches. 96% of Senegalese are Muslims and the country has a long-held tradition of interreligious harmony. Now, in sports news, we get updates on Christine Boma and Beatrice Masilingi, Peter Shadulile and Cricket Namibia, as well as some rugby results. See you after the short break.
This is still Sunset News and these are your sport news updates. Coach Hank Botta and his two protégés, Christine Boma and Beatrice Masilingi, are hard at work preparing for Friday's athletics meeting at the Coleman Sports Complex in the United States. Namibian international and Mamelodi Sundown striker Peter Shadulile broke a 10-year record that was held by Siabonga Nomvete of scoring at least 20 goals in the league after taking his tally to 21 goals. Now in cricket, the Eagles of Namibia won their first 50-over game against Uganda by seven wickets. The two sides will face one another again today. Namibia dethroned Kenya in a 10th semi-final of the Rugby Africa Under-20 Barties Cup in Nairobi with an excellent 16-5 win this afternoon. Coach Chrisanda Bota's team goes through to the final on Sunday. After the break, we'll get into the highlights from today's broadcast. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with Sunset News for the last half hour. Let's get into the highlights from today's broadcast. An earthquake occurred on Tuesday at 10.36 p.m., 24 kilometers northeast of Korihas, which had a magnitude of 5.2. The Ministry of Mines and Energy's Geological Survey confirmed today. In a media release by the Geological Survey's Deputy Executive Director, Gloria Simubali, it is said that the Namibian Seismology Network also recorded four aftershocks. Politicians have been fingered by the government institution's pension fund as culprits when it comes to squandering their pension money, subsequently subjecting them to rely on money from family and friends to get by. The trend of workers blowing their pensions before hitting retirement age is one of the many factors that gave birth to the controversial Financial Institutions Management Act that has pitted the financial regulator NAMFISA against the public. All public health measures in the fight against COVID-19 remain unchanged and are extended for a period of 30 days until 15 May 2022. This was announced by President Hage Gengob during the 42nd COVID-19 briefing on the national response measures. The president also called on Namibians to get vaccinated. And with that, we have come to the end of the broadcast. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all NMH platforms, on weekdays, as well as on our website, oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV channel 285 and Go TV channel 94 every weekday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. I am Ashwin Berry. This has been Sunset News. Don't end your day without us.